depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Barney. I'm going to be your senior judge today, and I just have some preliminary thoughts and comments to share with you about how this should go. So in this part of the competition, you're taking on a fictional business identity, and you're assigning to, uh, to us, the judges, similarly, a fictional business identity. So just make sure everybody knows who you are and who we, the judges, are before you begin. You'll have 25 minutes to describe the legal, financial, and ethical um, dimensions of the problem and recommend a solution that passes muster for all three areas. And during this time, we will not interrupt you. However, when you are finished, and I'll give you a two minute warning when it's time, um, the judges will stay in character as will you and we will ask you questions about the issues and the proposed solution. We'll do that for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and you'll stay in character, as will we. When that's done, we'll all take a deep breath, relax, and the judges will give you some feedback. Okay, if you're ready to start, whoever's leading the team, the floor is yours. Okay, so guys, are you ready? Okay, okay. Well, so first let me share my... PowerPoint with you, my slides. And please inform me if you do see the slides. Yes, they're showing up fine. Okay, so let's start. In the name of God. Hello, everybody. This is the Veins of Life Consulting Company. And we are here to discuss the challenges of red metal for green extraction methods. Uh, you are the board of directors uh, for a copper complex in the city of Shahr Babak in Iran. We are a consulting company that you have came to us to discuss the challenges that you are currently facing. Uh, we are a team of four. Uh, I am Ali Reza Samani, the business consultant of the group. My other colleagues include Ali Wafai, the technical consultant, Muhammad Ali Azizi, the financial consultant, and Zahra Jiriyai, the ethics consultant. Let's uh, discuss your company at first. It is a copper complex consisting of uh, several mining units and a copper smelting factory. Uh, it, it, it was found, uh, founded on the year of 2010. It is located in east south of Iran. And uh, this company employs over 3,500 individuals. Your mission statement uh, focuses on enhancing value creation derived from copper mining. And your main values are quality, safety, and innovation. Our analysis are based on SDG 8 and SDG 12 of UN Sustainable Development Goals, which are respectively decent work and economic growth, and also responsible consumption and production. Uh, you will see how our problem identification and our proposed solutions are based on these SDGs. So first, let's talk about the problems. What challenges do you face? Zahra will continue with the problems. Uh, thank you. What challenges do you face in a society? This company has uh, the actually, I mean, the copper company created uh, many job opportunities in a city. Considering that the copper companies have a lots of income, their employees earn uh, actually four times as much as the other population. The presence of a high income in the society, in that population, I mean, led to the high uh, in price that actually the prices and the inflation in the market. And that inflation, uh, I mean, uh, since not everyone can, uh, can uh, afford that much high prices, uh, the kind of the economic inequality happened in a city. Uh, for example, if one product in another city costs about $100, People in Shahr Babak have to wait uh, for about $150. Uh, and if the people can't pay that much, they have to travel to the other near city, which take about one or uh, two hours. Now let's discuss about the environment. 
the existence of the copper company in that area has two consequences. One of them is related to depleting underground water source, and the other one is water and air pollution. Uh, let me explain this more. Uh, the copper smelting factory uses a lot of underground water, causing the uh, near spring and also the plains to dry up. The destruction of the plain um, just uh, led to the loss of the pasture and also death of the livestock, and also the agricultural land destroyed too. Beside this, the, uh, beside, uh, this, before the company just uh, was founded in that city, the residents of the Shah Babak city uh, had a source of income uh, through trading meat and dairy. However, with the presence of the copper complex, the air and water become uh, contaminated with the waste. Uh, due to concern to the health of these products, uh, their sales just declined. And as the uh, source of income for the people just have been affected, there were uh, several protests against these companies. Uh, but also we have uh, the constraint to, uh, actually the legal constraint, due to environmental protection and environmental law, the companies can use limited extent water. This, con uh, this uh, constraint, constraint makes some extra cost for a company because the company have to bring the water from the other city. And this trans uh, transition just cost the company. Muhammad Ali will continue with the, uh, with the other next problem. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the last problem, which is uh, flawed employment policy. Uh, here, our agenda is focused on dissecting a significant issue, which is the company's employment policy. Uh, this policy is currently exhibiting fundamental flaws. These flaws are not just policy missteps, uh, but they're impacting the financial fabric of the company. Uh, firstly, let's discuss the high ratio of local employees. The company's policy was designed to somehow boost the local employment in order to enhance the economy of the city and somehow fulfill the governmental labor mandates. Additionally, as Zahra mentioned, um, there are some local protests uh, in the city uh, because of the negative environmental impact of your company. While this policy succeeded in boosting local employment, it has inadvertently resulted in a workforce that may lack the skills needed for the company's specialized tasks. The high ratio uh, isn't just a staffing issue, it's a strategic challenge, it's a tangible financial uh, problems. The costs for training are increasing and the time to reach, um, uh, let's say, peak productivity is getting longer. Uh, the company must uh, reevaluate and adjust its approach to somehow ensure that the workforce is not only supportive of the local community, but also aligned with the company's strategic needs. Uh, next, uh, we address the decline in production efficiency. This decline is a symptom of the current employment policy, which caused a large proportion of your workforce to lack expertise. Um, as production efficiency decreases, the company's operating costs are not appropriately adjusting, which can uh, lead to reducing profitability. Uh, the quality, the cost effectiveness, and something like the output of the company's operations, they're all compromised. And this is a critical matter that requires immediate action. Uh, let's go deeper into this flawed employment policy. As you can see in the table above, uh, the combination of uh, local and non-local employees has transformed from 50-50% combination to 37% uh, combination to, as I said, uh, fulfill the uh, community's requirement uh, for the economy and the law of recruiting local labor. However, the consequences of this policy have not been so much beneficial for your company. As the following two tables il illustrate, the policy has led to decline in the company's profit by the percentage of approximately 22 so based on these results, it's evident that the current employment policy, despite uh, its uh, honorable and noble intention, needs significant refinement. Ignoring these issues could lead to severe financial consequences for the company. However, with an assertive and a strategic overhaul of your workforce management, 
your company can transform this policy for the favor of both community support and financial growth. At last, the company must explore new ways to accelerate production efficiency, which resulted in solutions that Ali is going to present. Hello, and thanks for following us up until now. Now, now that we have diagnosed the bundle of problems the company has and rated its aspects, we are pleased to tell you that we have designed some solutions for this complex package of problems. Your advisors at the Ways of Life company truly investigated your problems and their roots. We chose the four important issues that were presented as the main problems of your company. We tried to find out the roots of these problems and provide you with comprehensive and innovative solutions to address them. The following two three solutions, each including several parts and a set of measures will be presented for the raised problems considering the ethical, financial, and legal aspects of them. To address the environmental problem, three main solutions are suggested. The first solution is based on taking the local people into account in the decision-making for the continuation of mining activities. The second solution includes the minimization of freshwater consumption using the water pinch method. And the third solution recommends the use of more effective filters for the filtering of sewage and exhaust gases. In the first part of our environmental solution, it is recommended that a local poll be held in the region every 10 years to decide whether to invest in the next phases of the mining project and whether to continue exploitation. This poll will determine the local people's opinion about the pros and cons of the continuity of extraction and allows them to be involved in choosing the fate of themselves and their families in being affected by the benefits and harms of the copper mine exploitation. In this case, investments in the next phases of the mine and continued exploitation will depend on the consent of the majority of those affected by the mine. This will be a more democratic way of dealing with the local people. As per the information received from you, we know that the approximate lifespan of this copper mine is 15 years. Therefore, 10 years is a good period for investment and operation phasing, considering the industry's current practice and investment logic. The second part of our environmental solution includes a technical solution to minimize fresh water consumption through the water pinch method. The water pinch method is an optimization technique that helps achieve reductions in fresh water use and wastewater generation using the first principles of fluid dynamics. This solution was raised considering a study that was carried out in the Khatunabad copper complex, which has an operational unit similar to yours. For this minimization, three main inputs should be given to the optimization software so that we can have the final design of the water consumption network and the required design parameters. First, a process flow diagram of water consuming units, introducing the processes that consume water, their relations, and their consumption volumes. Second, the concentration of pollutants in each of the water flows and their temperatures. Third, limit concentrations in the inlet and outlet flows of water and the limit temperatures should also be given, if any. With these three main inputs, the optimization software provides us with a network of different water flows and heat exchangers that minimize the input of fresh water. I would like to clarify this process using this schematic flow chart. Assume that these five units a to E are the water consuming units of your plant. Each of, each of them using fresh water by each of them uh, using fresh water. By using the optimization based on the water pinch method, we can redesign the water flows and use the outlets of units as the inlets of other units. This was a simple exa example of how implementing this method results in less fresh water consumption. In the mentioned research conducted for the Khatunabad copper complex, they achieved a reduction of about 26% in freshwater consumption. 
this example can be a good benchmark for your company. Last but not least is to use better and effective filters for sewage and exhaust gases. As you know, the wastewater produced in copper mines is one of the most polluting sewages in the industry. One of the main goals in mineral wastewater treatment is to remove suspended solids and reduce turbidity to recirculate this wastewater in the process. One of the best methods to reduce suspended solids is the chemical sedimentation method. Considering that filtration in your unit is done by this method, it should be noted that the factors affecting the efficiency of this method are important in two parts. The first part is the formation of clots, and the second part is their separation. Separation of formed clots is done by physical methods, which is affected by factors such as pH, types of effluent, type and dose of coagulant and coagulant aid, a speed of agitator, and time of agitator in fast and slow mode. The research results on this topic show that the most important effective parameters are onum coagulant, anionic coagulant aid, and the speed of the agitator in fast mode. We propose that your R&D unit would pay special attention to these items in the filtration operation. It is also recommended to study new technologies such as biofilters. To address the social problem, two main solutions are suggested. The goal of the first solution is to increase the purchasing power of the people. And the second solution includes investments in the regional supply chain of the company, which will lead to an increase in the supply of products at the regional level and as a result, a decrease in their prices. In the first solution, the goal is to develop some companies and production units in the copper value chain and the supply chain of the company in the region so that a larger percentage of the population of the region can make a living from the benefits of the company and the new companies. Of course, developing the value chain and the local supply chain can be beneficial to the company due to the reduction of logistics and transportation costs. It should be noted that our problem was the inflation caused by the company's presence in the region and the imbalance of people's purchasing power with the rising prices. In the copper value chain, it is recommended to proceed downstream with a vertical integration strategy through the establishment of intermediate and final product manufacturing factories in the region. All of these products can be produced in the region. We also propose the establishment of companies under the current, co under the current mother company to develop this downstream chain. Many local people will be able to work in these companies or factories and benefit from high corporate incomes. In the supply chain of this company, many goods and services are purchased, many of which can be produced by local people with competitive prices and quality, including bread, as you see in this picture, food, dairy products, clothing, office supplies, and even specialized equipment of operational units. Many of these products have the potential to be produced via entrepreneurship, the establishment of companies and workshops where native people can work and make a living. On the other hand, it is worth mentioning that the company's investment in its supply chain in the region will not only increase the purchasing power of the local people, but also will support the supply side of these goods. As can be understood from this supply and demand diagram, this increase in supply will cause the prices to decrease due to this added supply. With the, with, um, I mean, with these two solutions, the purchasing power of the public will increase due to the creation of high salary jobs in the region, and the prices will decrease with the added supply of goods. The pressure of inflation on the shoulders of the local people will be reduced by implementing this solution. And Ali Reza will continue other with solution. our other Yes, I will do. Uh, Mama, would you give me the time of place? Okay, thank you. So, uh, our previous solution, 
uh, hard purpose solution has given rise to two distinct needs. Firstly, we require individuals with an entrepreneurial mindset who can establish the new businesses we discuss. Secondly, these new businesses need workforce. So these two needs lead us to our last solution. We know that you have a legal constraint that mandates 50% of your uh, employees to be local, but you have voluntarily chosen to recruit 70% of your staff from local people. You have done this to make uh, the local, uh, to make trust in the local community. Muhammad Ali has shown you how this approach has negatively affected your cost. This is just that you go back to your previous 50-50 approach, but you cannot do this so recklessly. Because if you do so uh, and you fire the local people, all your efforts, all your previous efforts will be in vain. So first, let's analyze your staff. Among your staff, there are 30% who are non-local experts. You obviously have to keep them because you need these people to run your company. For the re remaining 70%, we suggest that at first, you have to select 10% uh, with the strongest entrepreneurial uh, esprit and direct them into your incubation program. We will talk about the incubation program in the next slide. Second, you have to retain 50% of them as your top performing employees, uh, ensuring compliance with government working regulations. And at last, we suggest that you move the remaining 10% of employees into the new businesses that you have created. The business is created by developing copper value chain or local supply chain management that we have talked about. So let's talk about the incubation program idea. This is just that you establish your internal incubator program. Uh, actually, you know, business incubators are specialized programs uh, designed to support new businesses and startups as they overcome challenges and grow. This shared environment helps collaboration and networking among entrepreneurs. It's not a complicated matter for you to design your internal, internal incubator. We have a large facility. Uh, just, uh, you have just to allocate some space for co-working environment so people can work on their ideas. Uh, besides that, uh, they probably need you to help them with new ideas and market insights of the city. Also, you can provide them with educational programs, workshops, and mentorship sessions. And at last, if you have fitness, some promising startups among them, you have the opportunity to invest in them and gain five to 7% of their equity in exchange for the investment that you make in them. Dear Executive Board of Directors of Shahrabab at Copper Complex, you have made a couple of bad decisions. These decisions, often influenced by short-term financial considerations, have negatively impacted the environment, society, and the overall situation of your copper complex. In this presentation, we try to demonstrate how strategic actions can lead to positive, uh, positive outcomes for all stakeholders. By embracing new technologies, you are revising your employment plans, and most importantly, by returning to people and using their capacity you can transform the current situation into one where everyone benefits. This was a presentation by Winds of Life Consulting Company. Thank you for trusting us. Well, thank you all. And um, I'm going to begin by introducing myself and each, each of the judges will do that before they ask you a question. Uh, but as a member of the board, I'm worried that we're looking at short-term changes to protect the environment, I guess, is, is a good way of looking at it. But the world needs copper. What's wrong with a little bit of pollution in, or, in exchange for the copper that we need for everything else we do as a, as a world? So uh, do we have to answer you right now? Or are there other questions as well? No, the, the, the other judges will have questions as well. Okay, okay. Well, well uh, I will say in my opinion, uh, if you have anything to add, please do. Okay. But, uh, you know, uh, when you say that uh, the world needs copper, uh, and you say that, well, uh, what about some little pollution? Actually, you have to consider that it's not a little pollution. Uh, 
the pollution that these copper uh, complex have uh, created in the last decade have changed the lives of uh, about uh, 80,000 people of Shahre Babak. And uh, these lives have changed a lot and there are a lot of problems. Uh, a lot of uh, social traditions have been, uh, have been destroyed. Uh, a lot of uh, people have lost their jobs, uh, lost their traditional jobs that uh, they were living with those uh, for uh, thousands of years because Shahre Babak is a kind of uh, uh, an old city in uh, Iran. And uh, when you're saying a little pollution, it comes to my mind, well, at first it's not a little pollution. And when you say that uh, there's copper needed for the world, well, uh, the way that you are creating this copper leaves us no world to use that copper. So absolutely there is something wrong and we have to look at some long-term approaches to ensure the sustainable use of copper and the sustainable development. If I may add to Ali Rosa's answer to your question, uh, we should also consider the environmental penalties and fines that the government will uh, impose uh, to your company. Uh, when you came to us, you talked uh, the legal aims of the environmental institution in the government and the fines and the penalties that uh, actually uh, their uh, amounts were high and uh, it's all, all it's, these fines also have financial impacts on your um, income and on your profits of course uh, this should also be considered Can I add something else to it? Actually, uh, even if the pollution be little, it has a long-term effect on a people's health. So even uh, you think that it's a little pollution, we have to think about it. It's not just uh, for short term, it's effect on a people's health for long term. So we have to consider it. Sagar, do you have a question? Yes, uh, I had a follow-up question on that. So, you know, beyond simply creating new businesses, uh, what models are proposed to ensure the equitable distribution of benefits from new economic activities? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, was your question toward the fact that we how can we ensure the economic growth? Uh, Did I understand well? Yeah, you spoke about, uh, you know, new economic activities in this region. You mentioned that 50% of the employees will retain their job. 10% of the employees will be free. They'll get jobs in your division. So what strategies are proposed to ensure the equitable distribution of benefits from the new economic activities? If I may answer, uh, let's take a look at the a strategy literature. Um, when I say when we proposed the investment in uh, copper value chain and the local supply chain, um, you should consider the synergy that these new companies will have uh, with your current company. I mean, uh, because you will be the supplier of the uh, copper value chain companies and uh, this synergy will uh, um, will almost help or even assure the profitability of those companies. Also, on the other hand, uh, for the local supply chain and the companies that were uh, would be developed uh, in on in that supply chain, we should be uh, very careful that uh, our investments would be. Uh, feasible and the reducing the reducing transportation costs uh, maybe would uh, I mean maybe would uh, would uh, be uh, be beneficial for those uh, companies that are developed in your local 
local uh, supply chain. I mean, the transportation costs will be reduced and uh, this uh, may help in uh, being feasible uh, of the new companies. Mark, catch him. So, and I have a sort of a technical question. In, in the solution that you had, you were developing a, using a flocculant to generate a sediment. Did you consider the impact? Is it sediment? Would it be hazardous waste relative to current environmental regulations? And if so, what's the environmental and economic impact of dealing with that hazardous waste? If you go to the next slide, I think the next slide would shows the diagram right there. So you have a flocculant you're, and you're generating a sediment. What's the, is the sediment has, hazardous waste and what are you going to do with it? Yes, uh, yes, the sedimentation process uh, has its uh, waste, uh, but it's solid, it's not fluid. And the uh, solid uh, produced by the sedimentation process, it will be separated as I illustrated by the physical uh, part of this process. Uh, as I uh, told, uh, we have proposed some some factors that may uh, cause in the uh, random uh, of this process. For example, if the, the if I may coagulant would be alum and the coagulant aid would be anionic, the process would be the process of separation would be better and uh, more effective. So uh, my answer to your question is that the, after the sedimentation, the waste is in solid uh, shape and it can be separated as uh, we explained in our presentation and be carried to where it can be uh, recycled or used or uh, other means that uh, Hey, Bob Stone. Yes, I I like the suggested uh, technical uh, changes that you're proposing, but we got into this because our profits are down. What sort of investment do we need to make to reduce water consumption and um, increase filtration efficiency? Um, what do we have to invest, and uh, when will that lead to increased profits rather than further decreasing our profits? Um, if I understood right, your question was about the water pinch method and what investments should be made so that uh, we can have the reduced freshwater consumption. Am I right? Yes. Um, first of all, the, this method uh, needs a, a really effective R&D so that the design of the new uh, waterfalls and uh, pipings would be, uh, would be developed. And then we should uh, invest in uh, buying the heat exchangers, for example, from the companies that produce them like Siemens or others, and um, uh, designing the detailed design of pipelines uh, for the for this uh, for this diagram for the new diagram of water flows, uh, buying them and uh, and uh, constructing the new uh, the new uh, the new flows will. Uh, Will cost for um, will be uh, uh, what I mean is that you should buy the heat exchangers and pipelines and you should pay for the design uh, and the construction of the new chart. So I had a question about this what? survey survey that you want to do of the employees. If there's only a 15 year supply of copper ore 
left in the mine, what good is it going to do to survey the employees every 10 years? They won't have, they, there won't be any time to implement 10 years from now, implement their suggestions if there's only five more years left. I'm sorry, could you elaborate further your question? I didn't sure, really sure. I thought I thought I saw a slide or somebody said that you want to survey the employees every 10 years. And in addition to that, there's only 15 years worth of copper left in the mine. So what's the point of a 10 year survey? Yes. Um what, what we meant was that uh, at this 15 years of copper uh, mine life span uh, should be separated to five uh, of uh, five phases of 10 years. And each 10 year uh, needs its own investments. For the first 10 years, you invest and you exploit the mine. And in the end of uh, the 10th year, you will ask the local people, those who have, been, who have been affected by the mine, the benefits, of course, for the jobs and the uh, harms for the pollutants, uh, that should, should we continue to invest in this mine or not? If they, uh, they see that the pollutants and the, uh, their health are more important, uh, they say that we do not want to continue exploitation and the next phases of investments would not be made in the mine. Uh, so the 10 year uh, was for uh, was uh, con considered for, uh, as a as an outcome of investment and operational logic. Because uh, if you know, the lifespan of the mine is 15 years, it's good to uh, separate it to five parts. Uh, could I answer your question? Yes, and we have uh, time for a couple more questions. Sagar? Yeah, I do have a follow-up question. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're up. No, I just thanked uh, Professor uh, Rosebray. Rosebray. Okay, yeah, I, I do have a, a two-part question. You know, first part is that how can the skills and knowledge of copper mining and processing workers be leveraged to support other industries suited to the region? And the second part to that is, have you consulted local communities throughout this process? How are you making sure their voices are integrated into the decision-making regarding the future development? Okay, to answer uh, your first question, uh, as I have uh, suggested, well, you have to implement an incubation program. We know that uh, the local workers that were previously work on the copper, uh, working in the copper complex, uh, hadn't uh, ha actually they didn't have the needed expertise to uh, the needed expertise in the uh, mining operation. Uh, so. Uh, if we want to, if we want to move them into new businesses, we have to make sure that these new businesses, uh, we have to make sure that they have the needed expertise in these new businesses. Actually, the, the, one of the most important uh, things that you have to consider is that other businesses are not that kind of uh, hard and technical matters, lot like copper mining, they are different, uh, such as the uh, supply chain management examples that we have talked about. It's like uh, yeah, the, the dairy, uh, dairy and meat, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, food, or for example, uh, anything in clothing. Yes, cloth. Uh, so uh, these are not that kind of uh, t that kind uh, kind of. Uh, complex technical matters, but, but uh, you have to make sure in your incubation program that you provide the needed mentorship to these new workers and to these new entrepreneurs who are going to uh, enter into their new businesses. Actually, you have to educate them. And this education is not as hard as educating them to be uh, mining employees yeah. and to be engineers. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I had a second question. I forgot what his second question was. 
No, but I have to cut you off because we're out of time. Okay, so okay, we'll, I'm sorry. We'll, so we'll stop here. Everybody take a deep breath. You're no longer from that company. We are no longer the board of directors. Just a bunch of folks who are uh, really enjoying your presentation. Um, let me begin just by saying that I really need to go learn about Shahari Babak. Sounds like a wonderful historical cultural center uh, in a part of Iran that I, I just don't know about. Um, so that was very educational for me. Um, I thought they, you picked a very difficult topic. You presented the complexity of the topic and uh, congratulations, good job. Anybody thank else you have very feedback? Much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Feedback for the panel? I enjoyed I enjoyed the presentation. I found the um, uh, the issue very interesting and um, in a way almost universal. Um, how do we increase profits, decrease environmental harm, and uh, uh, provide for the uh, people in our organization? Um, I. Uh, uh, applaud you for taking this on and for uh, presenting it with uh, uh, with such clarity. Um, one problem I had in in listening is I was never sure whether I should be um, listening to the speaker or or looking at the slide and. I think as you prepare more presentations, um, think about connecting the the speech, the talk to the picture. So, for example, on this slide, you you might say, um, on the incubation program, there's th three parts I want to talk about: the working space, the mentorship, and the investment. And uh, as far as the working space, we want to provide a physical location and, and so on, so that you kind of lead the listener through the through the slides and you don't make the you don't allow the listener to kind of bounce back and forth between what his ears are telling him and what his eyes are telling him. Um, I thought the presentation was uh, uh, very, very interesting, and I uh, applaud you for uh, for taking it on and for your presentation. Mark? Yeah, I thought, that, you know, this is a complex area. I, having been in the mining business. Sorry. Yep, the sorry, challenge, excuse me, the, sorry, the challenge is pretty, pretty extensive, especially the cost of compliance. You know, these types of things where you're trying to comply with these environmental regulations can really impact margins considerably. So looking at that and developing it and looking at the technology, as I was pointing out before, is really very, very critical to understand because the co sometimes the cost of compliance can completely wipe out your whatever profit you might be making and, and your ability to just gain um, authorization to operate. So it's, I mean, you, you talked about that. And I think that's, it's an important consideration and sometimes delving into that in considerable depth is sort of the make or break in, in many cases. So I appreciate your, your focus in that area. Mark, um, no, just that Mark. As, have all the judges have a chance to provide some feedback? I can share my feedback. Good. So uh, in addition to the feedback that's already been provided, I think you articulated the problem very clearly. Uh, you know the economic benefits and the social costs associated with the copper complex. Uh, the proposal aims high, and uh, you know for a truly sustainable hub, uh, this this seems to be a compelling goal for the region. And uh, as Barney mentioned, uh, since I'm unaware about the local economic region in that area, I need to dive deeper and do some more research. Uh, could I have aligned more with the Sustainable Development Goal Alignment that you mentioned, SDG 8 and SDG 12? 
to demonstrate a understanding of a broader development framework within the sustainable development goals and i like the multifaceted approach you know uh, for the economic diversification the value chain enhancement for employment in the region uh, so you gave us the systematic view of the problem uh, there are some areas for improvement uh, you could add some data uh, to strengthen the problem uh, you know incorporating uh, water scarcity levels a uh, potential impact on diversification and relevant case studies and even mining practices could be very helpful and uh, also when it comes to you know cultural specificity elaborating on how exactly the region's unique culture can be a driver for sustainable economic diversification and how you are planning to you know boost the employment in that region could be of uh, greater importance as well but uh, overall great job so uh, Professor Thies reminded me that um, I should have introduced or had the judges introduce themselves. So it's never too late to do that. So let me start. Again, uh, I'm Barney Rosenberg. By training, and some would say by inclination, I'm a lawyer. But before retiring, I worked for the last 15 years as the global vice president for ethics and business conduct for a British company in the aerospace business. And that company started in aerospace before there ever was such a thing as aerospace. In the year 1850, somebody invented what's called an altimeter for hot air balloons. And it measures the altitude above the surface of the earth for balloons. And Queen Victoria in England was so impressed that she granted them a royal charter and today they make something on everything that flies, even the International Space Station. That's a long-winded saying. I work with people who are a lot smarter than I am. Next. Sagar, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I can go next. Thanks, Barney. So I'm Sagar, uh, you know, UCLA grad, uh, background in electrical engineering. Uh, also have contacts with some mining companies and uh, MBA in business administration. I'm also co-founder of Place Power, located here in Los Angeles. Uh, it was great listening to your pitch. I think you guys did good. Mark? I'm Mark Hatch, and I'm with the Filmar Group. We're uh, environmental health and safety and sustainability consultants. By training, I'm a what's called an occupational hygienist. So I deal with workplace health and safety is my specialization. And... Uh, I can and and I used to work for a, a large energy company. We had mining operations, so I've I can I can appreciate the complexity and the challenge that you faced in in putting this together. So well done. Bob, did you go? Yeah, uh, I'm Bob Stone. Uh, I'm a uh, retired career civil servant. I spent uh, 30 years uh, in the uh, working in the Pentagon and in the, in the White House. Um, I'm a graduate engineer from MIT, and I've taught business ethics at the University of Redlands for about eight years. Terrific. So presenters, do you have any questions for us or anything you'd like to hear more about? Um, actually, I just want to invite you to our country. We Thank have you. lots of historical places and also delicious food and fruit too. Can I, can I tell one just terrible story? Oh. I, I, I think it's funny, but it's the history of the world in one short paragraph. And it goes like this. The Romans learned everything they knew from the Greeks. The Greeks learned everything they knew from the Egyptians. The Egyptians learned everything they knew from the Persians. And the Persians learned everything they knew from the Chinese who already knew everything there was to know. Well, that's a good story. Well, I, I just wanted to say that uh, it was an honor to be at your presence, and I wish that there would be a time that uh, we could uh, sit next to each other in person and talk about all the 
uh, different challenges that mining in Iran or in your countries, wherever they are, uh, whatever problems they are, and we can talk about them and uh, face them uh, in a way that uh, we can uh, reach a sustainable uh, development for uh, both uh, Iran and your countries. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I, I wanted to thank you and uh, say that it was a uh, great, it was a great honor participating in this event and uh, what uh, you all, uh, our masters said, was very humble. Uh, we are your students and we learn from you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ali. Good luck in the rest of the competition. Bye.